So I wanted to create a bit of an update video for those of you that are still sticking around hoping for another coding video uh, where I first of all go over some of the most frequently asked questions from the comments since the first video released over five years ago and then give you a little bit of an overview as to what's happened and why there haven't been so many videos as I'd originally planned. The good news is that if you're seeing this video, that means I've made at least one more coding video, hopefully more, and that will be released at the same time as the video that you're watching right now, as I've sort of like vowed to myself not to keep making promises that I can't keep and to actually finish the projects that I start. So hopefully that works this time. Before I get into the questions though, I just wanted to say thank you for all the kind words of support. Uh, I didn't really expect these videos to blow up nearly as much as they did, but to see all the people in the comments saying how much I helped them or how much they learned or how well I explained things was really humbling, so genuinely thank you. Now let's get into the questions. I can't answer all of them in this video, uh, but I did my best to pick out the most popular ones that I want to go over, and for most things, having a quick Google or a browse on Stack Overflow is going to be way faster than waiting for me to reply or to make a video like this one. Remember that you're definitely not the first person to encounter a problem, and people have been developing websites for decades, so you can find the answer to pretty much any question you can ask already somewhere online. Question one, how do I link to other pages? So when you're writing a website that's really simple, like uh, the one that we did in the last video, it's as simple as creating a new HTML file in the root of that project, and then setting the anchor tags href to slash and then the file name .html, and then when you click that, it will open up the other HTML file with the other code in it. You gotta remember, all the browser's doing is uh, downloading files, and then the browser then reads that code and converts it into like what you see on the page. Question two. How do I make one of the options on my navigation a drop-down? Have a look at this uh, page I've linked in the description. It's on the W3 Schools website and it will provide you with a bit of sample code and explain everything that you need to know. And the first way that they demonstrate is to use the hover state on the drop-down div. And the hover state is one of the many pseudo classes that we as developers can hook into to help accomplish um, certain things without the need for any JavaScript but I'm probably gonna make a video dedicated to pseudo classes in the near future. There is also an example at the bottom of the website where they do a dropdown that toggles uh, when you click it. Uh, this uses a little bit of JavaScript which we haven't started covering yet in this series, so uh, you can by all means give it a play in the demo, but it's not something that we're gonna be covering in this video. Question three, how do I make an image a link? Uh, this is dead simple. All you have gotta do is wrap the image in an anchor tag and that will make it clickable and it will take you away to wherever you want to go. Question four, how do I put a website public or live so that anybody can get to it using a web address like mywebsite.com, for example? Well, I covered that in this video and it's a little bit out of date now, but the basic principles still all apply, so the link is in the description. Question five, how can I make a shop slash e-commerce website? This is far beyond the scope of this series and unfortunately it's not something that you can just do with front-end languages like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It's, if it's something you're seriously interested in doing or learning, then I strongly urge you to check out something like MVC and research the .NET framework, as you're going to need a back-end system and a database. This means learning a fourth language, which is C Sharp, but this is definitely one worth learning if you're serious about going into software or web development. An alternative route would be PHP, but in my experience, in the IT industry, you're far more likely to be working in C Sharp, so that's the one I'd put the energy into learning. and. Uh, after you've learned a bit of C-sharp, PHP is a lot easier to pick up anyway. There are simpler ways of building an e-commerce website, like using a pre-built e-commerce system that is paired with a content management system. And some examples of this are Umbraco with the Marcello plugin, uh, WordPress with the WooCommerce plugin, as well as most website builders will offer some sort of e-commerce system. I'm sure you've seen plenty of them knocking around in people's sponsor spots in their videos. Completely bespoke solutions are always the most fun and rewarding to build though, and you will definitely learn a ton on your journey. So if you have time and you're willing to do some studying, I'd say try building your own from scratch. If you're not interested in becoming a developer or are just looking to save some money by building your own e-commerce website from scratch, there is a reason that it costs tens of thousands of pounds to build a good e-commerce website, and it takes a long time and quite a lot of expert knowledge to get a good quality and more importantly, secure finished product. Question six. I want to become a developer, so where do I go from here? Well, I've noticed that I have a lot of young people watching my videos that may still be in school or college that are interested in starting their career as a developer. There are so many different routes that you can take in the development and IT industry that there is no short answer, but I can tell you my opinions based on what I did. Personally, I think that experience teaches you far more than learning in a classroom, which is why I would choose an apprenticeship or a work placement over a university or college any day of the week. 
Unfortunately, this isn't something that everybody can do, but being able to work alongside people that have been in the industry for a couple of decades, uh, being able to see how the industry works and all the complexities that doing this job day in, day out has is something that I think every budding developer needs to do so they can really make up their mind as to what sort of avenue they want to go down. You also need to consider what aspect of development you want to go into. Do you want to be a web developer? If so, front end or back end or maybe both. Do you want to be a database administrator? If so, you should probably be learning some SQL and not watching this video. Uh, do you want to be a Windows application developer? Then you should be learning things like .NET and WinForms. Do you want to be developing lower level stuff like kernels, operating systems? These, these are all things that you need to take into account. And obviously you don't need to be 100% mind made up and set on one thing, but you need to give it some thought and you need to just try things out, see what you get on with and what you enjoy. and. Uh, after working on something for a little while and you decide it's not for you and you want to pursue a different route, that's completely fine. Personally, I'm a bit of a giant nerd and have some weird obsession with learning as many different things as possible. So after my A-levels, I managed to land an apprenticeship with a relatively small development house uh, where I had really varied um, roles with literally no ICT related qualifications. This gave me the chance to work on a variety of different kinds of projects alongside some really talented and experienced developers and as a result I've worked with pretty much all of the stuff that I mentioned before and some that I didn't and I also had the opportunity to take some exams for technologies that I was using at the time which means I'm now a Microsoft certified professional and an Embraco certified professional. I much preferred this varied approach over just specialising in one specific thing like just becoming a front-end developer and only doing HTML, CSS and JavaScript as I really got to experience all the different aspects and figured out for myself what I liked and what I didn't like and what I was best at. But all of this brings us to the final question that I wanted to answer in this video which is where is the next episode? I warn you this might get a little bit deep and the TLDW is that it's already live, obviously it went up with this one but basically when I started this series I was still in school and was very much still learning. I was studying online using websites like Code Academy and uh, playing with personal projects as well and things for friends and families just to like have something to put on my CV that were really crap and quite embarrassing to be honest. You might not think it if you're in school at the moment but back then I actually had a lot more time uh, to myself and taking my apprenticeship and becoming a full-time developer has definitely changed that. I'm also a perfectionist so pretty much all of my videos take an extremely long time to make even the really bad ones trust me so that doesn't help at all. Another factor was that I sort of fell out of love with YouTube around then too. Um, it's always been sort of like a bit of a hobby to me, uh, making videos when I feel like it, but when these videos started getting relatively popular, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make more of these coding videos, even though I wasn't really enjoying the making anymore because I just started working in the industry. And this ultimately just meant that I didn't want to make any more videos. And it really sucked because I knew that I was letting you guys down. I was also concerned that I'd left it such a long time that there might not be any interest anymore and that I'd advanced my knowledge so much further now than when I was trying to teach that I might have actually lost that connection and insight I had when I first started making those first few videos that made them so helpful. I think because I was making them when I was still very much learning, I could sort of remember the things that I got hung up on that was difficult for me to grasp and explain it in a way that would have helped me if I was just starting out. Now that seems so long ago and it's sort of been dwarfed by some of the other stuff that I've worked on, I'm a little bit worried that I might go too quickly and make things too confusing for people but I guess we'll find out in the next video. I'm trying to start off slow and uh, we'll, we'll slowly ramp up into the more complicated stuff. I do want to try and get back into the YouTube groove if I can, mostly because I want to start sharing other parts of my life with you guys um, and the project that is my classic Volkswagen Baja Beetle that some of you have seen on Instagram. And I sort of felt it was unfair of me to start another series without doing something about this one first. I don't want this channel to be just entirely about coding as I have such a varied set of interests and hobbies so I wanted to be about all the different things that interest me and I want to bring you guys along for the ride with me and learn with me too. But anyway, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video.